Chris Deanda, born and raised in Reno, Nevada, now 43 years old, and I enjoy hunting. I enjoy the, I have a strong passion for hunting. I believe for us that are true hunters, it's in our blood. And I've had uh, a lot of wonderful experiences in North America, and I've wanted to venture out to see other parts of the world that I've read about. Some of the guys that I've read about that have, have done these adventures, I wanted to explore that for myself. With that, it's brought me to a few different Asian countries now, uh, throughout Europe, down to New Zealand, and Mexico. I love exploring the places. They're far and out of the way of where most tourists are able to go, and so there's much more to it than actually just hunting the animal. It's undiscovered territory for me, and to explore that from my own experience, that's really what it is. The Markhor caught my eye years ago and in the hunting world, maybe the mountain game hunting of the world, the Mark or the Pinnacle, especially the Astor. And reading about it and looking at the, the mountains of the Himalayas, uh, the Hindu Kush, and now we've got to experience the Karakorams as well. I mean, they are just fascinating. So. For me, it was the ultimate, and despite what everybody said back at home, be careful, oh my gosh, is it safe, how can you do that, why are you leaving, I wanted to experience it for myself, and it's like, I get anything can happen anytime, anywhere, but you know what, good people are good people, and I felt really confident and comfortable with the gentleman that I put this hunt together with uh, per Dennis Shelley and it's been it's been an unbelievable experience just all positive that's for sure conversations back and forth with Danish, we were putting a plan together dependent on weather. Our two top animals were of course the cashmere and the astor. Well, completely different areas, lots of traveling in between, so I decided that the most efficient way to handle the logistics would to charter a helicopter. In my mind, the Kashmir area was a little more accessible and he thought we could get that finished up early and then spend more of our time on the Astor, which is exactly what we did. So we flew to Chitrail, met there by Secunder, who organized the hunt, wonderful man, stayed in a great uh, hotel slash bed and breakfast, and I was fortunate to get the Kashmir within, I believe, three or four days of what it was. When we got to Chitrell, we had time in the afternoon to make sure the rifles were zeroed, and that worked out well. So it felt good for the next day to get out there and uh, start hunting.
Okay, sir. Thank you. Have a good time. Thank, Thank you very you. much. Law enforcement agencies seem to be trying to escort them away. Upon entering the, the, the area where the Markor had been spotted, it was uh, a little overwhelming the amount of people that knew about the hunt and wanted to tag along and be a part of it. So within, it seemed like minutes, there was anywhere from 30 to 50 to 75 people at a time just hanging out on the roadside <laughs> watching what we were doing. And we were trying to watch the Markor to make a plan. The guys found a big Markor that we want to go after, just kind of right up here. Uh, and it was, it was a difficult shot because it was so steep and I didn't want to take a chance um, and take a chance and miss or perhaps wound him. And uh, so I decided not to. Tomorrow we're going to wait. We got the whole day, take our time, make a plan in the morning, and go from there. It's really special for them to know that their, their animals have value, and that value brings a lot to their community. And they are a happy people, just a good people. It's not what's projected to us over the media back at home. So it was, it was fun. Uh, to be just a part of that aside from actually hunting. I mean, you got all this going around in the background and it's like, what are all these people doing? This, is, this isn't normal, but it's not normal for them either. Having laid our eyes on one of the most unique animals in the world that has basically come back almost from extinction, really, was really heartfelt because I feel like I'm contributing to that and there's going to be another hunter next year, the year after, and hopefully for many years because of the conservation plan for these markers. Seeing these animals for the first time and knowing that uh, we're we're one of the very few that have this opportunity. It kept things in perspective for me and it really keeps you humble because this really is a once in a lifetime opportunity. To view these animals, it means a lot. And I'm just, I'm glad to be a part of the success of the animals in the future. So a day later, the guys found the billies. There were two decent ones, and basically I could choose between one of those. They were old, mature, and good trophies. They said, hey, we need to re leave really early in the morning, get up to a spot that we kind of have a, a good feeling that the uh, animals are gonna um, not necessarily walk by, but be in the general area so that if we need to move, we can, and on our way we went. Walked up in the dark, tried to be as uh, light as we could, but yet carry some warm gear because it was, it was chilly. And maybe an hour, hour and a half later, we were in position. A couple of hours ago, we left the truck on the side of the road, crossed the bridge to get on the animal side here.
A couple hours later, the guy spotted a couple females, more females, a couple young guys, and then the two billies that we were meant to go after. And after an excruciatingly long day of waiting, and the guys glassing, and me holding the position for the shot, the animals eventually came low enough and within range where I felt comfortable to take a good ethical shot. He put himself in a position where his vital area didn't allow me to shoot. There was one branch sticking off of a tree right there. And then he laid down and everybody was like, oh. Then he stood back up, everybody got excited, turned himself around and bedded again. About an hour later, he finally decided he wanted to make a move. He stood up took one step. I had a wonderful position for the rifle, even though I had been holding it for some time. Felt confident in the shot, squeezed the trigger, and I had no idea what happened other than somebody saying reloading, or somebody said reload, and then within a few seconds, uh, I believe you said you got him, somebody said he's down, we're all relieved, very happy uh, that the animal was down, was wounded. It was a good Whoa! shot in the end after we, we got to him. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. First mark or hunt. Wow. Couldn't have gone better. So immediately after the animal was down, uh, two or three of the guys that were with us, they left and went right up to the spot where the animal was down and started to pack him back to us. For me, that is a, a completely different way of hunting and I wanted to be a part of that. It was, it's, it's in me to go see the animal where he lay. I understand their culture and they're very hardworking people and they go out of their way to do just about anything for you. So sometimes you just gotta lay back and accept the different cultures around the world, to which we did. Fascinating seeing how they brought him down to us. I mean, they had him tied with ropes and the horns were hanging over here. We're all relieved, cold. So the guys just started getting some firewood, made a campfire right there underneath the rock. Everybody was happy and uh, high-fiving, giving the thumbs to each other, and we just we were living in the moment. Thank you, Chris. Thank you for coming and uh, encouraging whatever we are doing here. And we get all the good people from all over the world and who are helping us conserve this beautiful animal. And here, <coughs> on behalf of uh, the Al Burhan Conservation Society, Tushi. I am grateful. Thank, thank, thank you very much. Thank you so much. We had a wonderful time, wonderful hunt. Yeah, fun hunt. Every day, it's been a blast. Thank you.